Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Heidi McIndoo, and I am a registered dietitian. Um, today, I am speaking about stress management, so something that I think everyone can can benefit from. All right, so uh, just so you know, I have the chat open. Everyone's uh, muted, of course, uh, so we don't have the background noise, but the chat is open, so please feel free to pop any questions or comments in um, whenever you whenever you have one. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so let's get started. Whoops, sorry. Hit the wrong button. There we go. All right. Uh, so our what I hope to cover today, or what I plan to cover, um, is what exactly is stress. Um, what, uh, how you can identify or recognize that you may have stress in your life. I, some sig um, symptoms, I hate to use that word, but uh, some signs that you have a lot of stress are very obvious, um, but others aren't. So we want to talk about that. And then most, so those first couple things, we're just going to sort of go through quickly, just sort of a, as a background. But then what we really want to talk about is um, how you can manage your stress. So that's the big, the big focus today. All right, so what is stress? So stress is actually just your body's reaction to any change from the norm. So it may be, um, you know, something positive. It may be something negative. It, it doesn't matter. You know, getting uh, a new house can be uh, stressful. Having a baby can be stressful. Those are both obviously very positive events, but um, they are still stressful nonetheless. So it's just any anything that causes your body to have, uh, so sort of to change uh, the way things go, whether it's physical, mental, or emotional, any kind of adjustment or change your body needs to make uh, due to a new situation. Uh, some, you know, some stress reactions aren't even, uh, actually, they're just sort of a perceived threat, maybe not an actual uh, threat is maybe a strong word, um, but there may be um, something that you are anticipating uh, may happen and maybe it doesn't ever happen and you still have a stressful reaction to that. Um, and what happens during stress is that fight or flight uh, sort of response. So yes, blood vessels constrict. Uh, you have energy boost, that adrenaline boost, um, your breathing quickens, your senses are sharpened. Um, but while all this is happening, other systems that, that your, body's, your body does not need for this, you know, sudden stressful, and this is, this is not long-term stress. This right here, this is that like just immediate, like, whoo, something, you know, something bad happened or something stressful suddenly happened. Um, any body system that isn't needed, um, those systems are sort of repressed or suppressed. They, you know, your, your, um, your body isn't going to be, you know, funneling blood to your digestive tract when you are trying to um, get out of the way of something falling, you know, something like that. Um, oops, sorry, I keep hitting the... My buttons keep going crazy for me. Um, so also during stressful situations, um, you know, good things can happen. There's sort of a negative side of stress and a positive. So the positive side of stress is that uh, it can improve concentration, make you more efficient. Um, your body is able to um, put itself in a position where uh, you can actually accomplish things that maybe you didn't think you possibly could. Um, and so these are all the, like I said, the positive, that's the positive side of stress. So while there is that positive side of stress, uh, obviously we know there is a negative side of stress, and that is what I'm going to talk about more in a, in a minute. But there is a point where we reach that optimal level of stress where we're you know we we're peaking in the uh the performance and the efficiency and and how our body performs 
but we're not getting those negative consequences. So uh, you can see on the graph here, like there's our, we get to that middle point there, that optimal point where a little bit of, of stress and anxiety uh, around a situation makes us work better, but then it goes over the edge and it causes too many negative symptoms. Think about, you know, uh, situations where, I mean, I think school is a, is a perfect example, um, or even, even work when, you know, say you have a deadline to work on, and so today is Wednesday, maybe you have something due in two weeks from today. Eh, you know, not very stressful, you're fine, you, you'll get it done, you got a couple weeks, and then now all of a sudden it is, uh, you know, two weeks, it's Monday, and now, oh, oh my gosh, I've only got two days. So obviously, you know, where is that at some point your body is, you know, you go into overdrive and you're, okay, yep, I can get this done, I can get this done. You need that little push of that stress to motivate you to do the job. Uh, and hopefully that happens um, when you still have an adequate amount of time to actually do the task or whatever it might be so that we don't get into that, that panic level. All right, so here's what happens though when we have not only recurring stress, but sort of this underlying ongoing stress. So again, I mentioned big things, you know, having a baby, getting a new job, buying a house, all stressful. But uh, what about if there's just a, a tense situation at work that uh, is, or, or at home, that is just, you know, causing this sort of underlying stress? It's not this, um, you know, rapid, you know, the fight or flight response necessarily, because it's more low level stress that it's just, instead of boom, there it is, you know, like a, you know, uh, a car, you know, almost getting into a car accident or a, a car heading towards your car, that, that quick, you know, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what can I do? Let me fix this. It's more that underlying, just always there, low level stress. And the problem with that is uh, it can, really disrupt a lot of aspects of your health. Uh, that's why the stress is an issue. So we're never going to get rid of stress. Like I said, stress is your body's reaction to anything, you know, out of the norm. We're never going to get rid of it. What we need to try and do is learn how to reduce what we can, um, but just manage it so it doesn't come out in these more negative, uh, as these negative symptoms. So this underlying recurring stress, it can come out as allergic reactions, think hives, rashes, things like that. Um, I mean, some of these things I think people more associate with stress, maybe the anxiety and the headaches, but it can also uh, increase your risk of diabetes, heart disease, heartburn, uh, decreased immunity, which means you're getting sick more often because what did I say? I said that when your body's going through stress, it is not really um, delivering those resources to the other uh, parts of your body that need it, um, you know, need attention or need nutrients or whatever it might be, need energy. Your immune system is one of those. So your immunity levels go down, you get sick more often. Uh, you may not sleep well when you're stressful, which is really too bad because stress would be very beneficial. Um, and just pain in general, you know, tightness. Uh, everybody has pain in different uh, areas. Everybody sort of responds uh, as a slightly different response to uh, something like this. So just any sort of underlying uh, nagging pain uh, could be a response to stress. And irritable bowel is another one. And there are other ones that, um, you know, that I may not have listed here, but like I said, everyone has a different uh, response to stress. These are just a few of uh, again, I hate to use the word symptoms, but uh, symptoms that you may not necessarily think, oh, that maybe that's stress related. That's why I'm having that problem. So here are some other, um, some obvious, some not obvious signs of oh, signs is a better word, signs and symptoms of, you know, maybe you're having this long-term stress. Like I said, you know, tightness, muscle pain, sleep difficulties, um, uh, choking sensation, just that sort of, again, tightness in your, in your throat, um, 
worrying, con you know, lack of concentration. Um, you can't think think clearly. Uh, you may be, uh, you know, ruminating about something, just sort of, you know, you can't get the situation out of your mind. You keep going over and over it again. Irritability, edginess, anger. I mean, so many. You can look at all these and um, really see why it's very important to try to manage stress so it doesn't cause all of these um, or any of these combination of uh, symptoms. All right, and here is the important part, the stress management part. So like I said, stress, we're not getting rid of it. That's not the point of, of today's talk. I'm not going to give you some magic bullet of, oh, this is, you know, just do one, two, three, and you're never going to have stress again. You will have stress and it's fine. And there's a positive side of that. And, you know, we want to embrace that, but we want to manage it so that it is not causing all of those long-term uh, and short-term problems. So we want to look at relaxing, different relaxation tips. We want to look at how electronics work in with this, the, you know, all these digital electronic devices, what role do they play in our stress? Um, we want to make sure we're getting activity regularly. We want to make sure we're, you know, nourishing ourselves both with foods and with self-care. So this is what I want to address today. All right, so when it comes to uh, relaxation, uh, there's a few different things that you can try. And, and basically when we're, you know, another thing during stress is your body releases certain stress hormones. So if we can uh, reduce those stress hormones. Um, you know, those hormones are one of the things uh, that lead to some of those signs and symptoms. And some of my management techniques that we're going to talk about, they not only help reduce those hormones, but they also help your body produce those more positive hormones, the hormones that help you relax and feel happier. Um, so that's why we, we need to look at all these and they how they inter interact interact with each other so in terms of relaxation there's different kinds of relaxation there may be uh you know relaxation that you need in the moment uh, but they're also you want to make sure you're including some sort of relaxation in your day on a daily basis and everybody relaxes in a different way but basically what the goal of relaxation is simply to get yourself your mind your body in a position where, you know, all you're really focusing on is yourself, your inner self. You're not worried about what else is going on and all the other challenges that are going on during the day. Um, and it's just, even if you, you know, do this just a few minutes each day, uh, it can really help uh, reduce some of those long, again, committing to it, do it every day, make it, you know, put it on your calendar, put it on your agenda, set an alarm. Uh, so that you are doing it uh, regularly and doing it consistently and regularly, you can see, um, you know, you may identify that you are responding to stressful situations better. And what does that mean? It means less of those negative stress hormones and less of those symptoms. Like I said, we're still going to have stress. It's how we manage it and respond to it. So if you find that, um, you know, you used to just fly off the handle at the little littlest thing, you start incorporating some of these relaxation tips, uh, you may find that you don't fly off the handle as much. So again, you're not, you know, flipping out as much. So different kinds of relaxation. So one is called, um, you know, you, it's called different things, but breathe focus or focus on, you know, on a word. So what you want to do, breath focus, sorry, um, is you want to focus on either your breathing, listening to your breathing, or come up with a word or a phrase that you sort of repeat to yourself internally over and over again. What this does is it gets your mind focused on, again, either your breathing or this word, and it makes it difficult for those other messages that are stressing you out to get in there. I'm not saying they won't. Plenty of times you're gonna be trying this and all of a sudden you notice, oh, wait a minute, now I'm thinking about that problem again. When, and that's fine. That's the way it works. 
as soon as you notice that, you get right back into listening to your breathing, uh, repeating that focus word, a mantra, some people call it. Um, I used to do this when I was younger. I still do it sometimes if I have a hard time sleeping. I literally just say sleep over and over again in a, in a very relaxed way um, in my head. And it just helps all that clutter from the day get out of my head because I'm focusing on that one word. Uh, sort of what you know you can do with uh, mindful meditating. So again, you know, you set a time. Uh, maybe this is how you start your day, or maybe it's how you end your day. But you get in a um, you know comfortable clothing, a comfortable room in terms of not too hot, not too cold, quiet, uh, not overly bright, um, and really just have this time just to focus on listening to your body and being aware of your body and ignoring everything else. Um, some people, it works with guided imagery. So this is where you just sort of create um, a scene in your head. Uh, and it may be um, as a very simple scene, but the more elaborate the scene, the more successful uh, the relaxation will be. Because again, you're really focusing on, you know, don't just, you know, you don't want to say, oh yeah, I'm sitting by a waterfall. You know, imagine the waterfall, what is the waterfall flowing over? What sounds do you hear? The water, the birds, whatever else is in there. The more elaborate you can make this image you're creating, uh, this scene you're creating, the more your body is focusing on that and the less it can worry about everything else out there. Uh, and for a lot of people, yoga is helpful, Tai Chi. Um, you know, any kind of those sort of uh, stretching, relaxing, meditative kinds of uh, workouts. And honestly, well, I'm going to talk about exercise in a minute, so I'm not going to bring that in there right now. But uh, any of these can be, again, a lot of these really are interconnected. So a lot of yoga has to, and, and Tai Chi has to do with breathing um, and things like that. So all of this sort of works works well together. All right, so now, what about all those digital things, all those electronic things? So the problems with these is they're there constantly. And so, you know, how are you getting a chance to, you know, relax when something is constantly lighting up or buzzing or beeping or, you know, vibrating? And it really, and, and one of the ways they can increase your stress is that, um, fear of, oh, what am I missing? I'm, you know, that fear of missing out that what am I missing? If I don't pay attention to my phone uh, or my device, you know, oh, if something buzz, I better check what that is. And it really, one of the problems is if you are trying to complete a task and do something, it gets you off track and it, you know, now, okay, now we're delayed at, at finishing this task we need to do. And now maybe that's anxiety producing. Um, so these are all things, uh, you know, electronic related. I feel like it um, also they are problems to help you if if you're bringing electronics like into the bedroom, it can affect your sleep habits and poor sleep um, a is a, a side effect of stress, but also if you're not getting adequate sleep, you're not going to respond and manage stress well. So getting a good night's sleep is crucial. Um, and so getting those electronics out of the bedroom, is a good first step to that. Uh, so if you are somebody who does a lot of time on electronics or a lot of uh, social media time, you need to set yourself some limits. So um, set some electric free time day time every day. So maybe it's, you know, right after dinner, no electronics after dinner, no electronics, you know, two hours before bed, whatever it might be, plug it in, put it in another room, not the bedroom, if you need it for an alarm clock, go to Target, go to Walmart, get yourself a cheap little alarm clock. They work well and they only buzz when you want to wake up, not all throughout the night. Um, if you are big on social media, uh, again, set a daily limit. Say, okay, I'm going to only look at social media, you know, for maybe a, a half hour in the morning, half hour at lunch, maybe a half an hour uh, before dinner or right after dinner before you get rid of the electronics and set a timer if you need to. The problems with all this social media is it is just, it's constant. It's always updating and there's always something you feel like you need to see and, and that's how you get lost in it and lose track of time and 
that's where that stress is. Oh my gosh, I only meant to sit down for five minutes and it's been an hour and I need to do X, Y, and Z. Turn off those push notifications. You do not need to know every waking hour when somebody has emailed you, when the weather has changed, when somebody is texting you, when somebody is messaging you, when you know a game that you might play, somebody is asking you to play. You don't need to know that 24 hours a day. Um, Honestly, my only push notifications are just for messengers because I figure, you know, texting because if people are texting me, they want to reach me. And I know if my phone beeps, it's because somebody's texting me. And if I'm not in a situation where I can respond to that right away, I can let it go. And I know, okay, I'll have to check that, you know, when I can. But I don't have to worry about, you know, I'm getting notifications, you know, you know every few seconds. What is it? What's it from? I don't know. Is it something I need to do now? I don't need notifications from my bank or from the gas station that prices have gone down. You know, all these things, turn them off. Um, and also, you know, think about, again, if you're big on the social media, think about, you know, who are you following? Are you following thousands of people that you don't even know? Clear out and cut down the social media. Make it more meaningful to you. So, yes, if you're into certain um, hobbies, you know, yeah, it's nice to follow other knitters or other bakers and see what what they're creating. Um, but you, you know, other than that, it really should be just something where you can interact with your friends and family. And it's much more meaningful that way, especially if you're trying to set these time limits. Um, you know, if you're going to say, okay, I'm going to be on social media for a half an hour and you have to spend 25 minutes scrolling through posts of people you don't know that you don't care about, what's sort of a waste of your time? So really clear out and just follow those people that you're interested in, in seeing what, what's going on with them. Um, but yeah, definitely get some uh, electronic free time daily. I, as a dietitian, I highly encourage meal time to be electronic free, uh, just so you can focus on uh, savoring your meal. So that's one, uh, one time to do that, but also just before bed, because the electronics really um, do mess with your um you know, your brain in terms of triggering when it's time to start relaxing for the evening and, and things like that. So my vote for electronic free times are definitely before bed and at meal time. But, you know, just find some times and, and where you can, again, put them in another room, turn them off, whatever it might be. They're going to, everything's still going to be there when you go back. Um, so you're not going to miss out on something. Activity and exercise, crucial, 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 because what exercise does in, a, in, in addition to all the, you know, making you healthier, cardiovascular system, uh, muscle tone, all that, exercise helps reduce endorph, or release, makes your body release endorphins. These are those hormones that make you feel good, that make you happy, that make you relaxed. So this is what we want. We want your body to have more of these and less of those negative stressful ones. What is exercise? It's anything you want it to be. As long as you are moving your body and you're getting your heart rate up, that's exercise. It doesn't have to be a certain class at a gym, a certain time of the day. You want to try and be moving your body and increasing your heart rate as many times a day as you can in as many different ways as you can. So uh, you know, if you have a dog, take the dog out for a walk, but not one of those leisurely walks, you know, bring, bring it like a stick that you can throw and they can run and get it and you, you know, keep up with them kind of thing. Using the stairs, we've been saying this for a million years, but it does help. And just all these little things help. You don't think that to exercise, it needs to be, a, oh, I don't have 30 minutes or 40 minutes to exercise. That's fine. Fit in five or 10 minutes here and there when you can. Um, you know, playing with your kids can be exercise, hula hooping, jump rope. There's so many different things. I mean, if you work in a building with stairs and you have to climb up and down those stairs uh, three or four times a day, that may be 10 minutes of your activity. That, I mean, that may, that's going to add up um, over the course of the day. So look at things like that where you can uh, fit some more activity into your day and make sure it's things you like to do. Yes. Um, plan for it and be prepared. So don't just say, oh, I'm going to be more active tomorrow. 
Well, no, make a plan. What are you going to do? If you're going to go for a walk at lunch, then you need to make sure you bring sneakers with you or something to wear appropriate for lunch. If you're going to get up early and, um, you know, maybe do a, a quick um, like hula hoop or jump rope for 10 or 15 minutes, then you need to set your alarm early so that will happen. So make these plans and be prepared for it. Like I said, you don't need a big 30 minute chunk at once. Do a few 10 minute chunks, a couple of 15 minute chunks, or like I said, going up and down the stairs several times a day could all add up to be one 10 minute chunk. So look at how you can break it up and, and fit it in um, in different ways. Get a partner to do it with. It's so much easier uh, to skip activity when somebody else, when you don't feel like somebody else is counting on you or depending on you and vice versa. You help each other out that way. Um, you know, park your car far away from places. Again, we've been hearing this one for a long, long time, but yeah, is parking your car away from a place once going to be a big deal? No, it's not. But if you have to go to work and you go for a couple errands after getting to and from your car at work, to and from a couple of errands, eh, it may be five minutes or so of, of activity. And it's just a nice habit to get into as well. Um, and also look at activity as sort of like an appointment. You can't just skip it just because you want to. So you need to have put it in your calendar, schedule it in, and that way when you are scheduling other things, you, can, you know that that exercise slot is there and you need to plan around it. Maybe you can't always plan around it, but maybe if it's there, you'll say, okay, you know what? I need to have this work meeting at this time, so I'm going to move the exercise slot up a little earlier or down a little lower. So you're still planning how you're going to get that in. Uh, and nutrition, we definitely want to get the healthy foods in there. Um, foods also uh, boost serotonin levels. That's that good hormone level that we want. Um, foods can help lower our blood pressure and boost our immunity. So these are all things that we want to do when we're managing stress. So what food choices are good? We want to get those fruits and veggies. Aiming for five to nine servings a day is ideal. It may sound a little overwhelming, but if you plan for them, it's not too rough. All right, you put some berries on your yogurt in the morning. There's one. You um, bring some carrots for to dip into hummus for a snack. There's two. Uh, maybe you have uh, an orange with your lunch. There's three. Maybe you have um, some peanut butter and apple in the afternoon for a snack. There's four. At dinner, have a salad and a cooked veggie and a fruit on the side. I've got seven right there. Um, aim for getting those healthy fats in. Salmon, uh, the flax, ground flax seed you want that's um, much more, um, your body can digest and absorb that, whereas the flax seeds can't really break that down. Walnuts, avocados, things like that um, are great. Those complex carbs, whole grains, cereal, oats, popcorn, whole grain crackers, cereals, all those things. These are things that not only um, give help your body with those good hormone levels, but they also keep you feeling fuller longer. Nuts are great. Um, and maybe if, you know, if you're hungry at night, a nice simple small snack, um, you know, a little bowl of cereal, or maybe some yogurt, something like that. I know we're we're cutting our cutting our time short, so I'm going to sort of go through these quickly. If you guys do have any questions, now's the time to start popping them in the chat so I can see them. Um, but ways, you know, maybe you eat out of stress. So how can we fix that, uh, or how can we, you know, alleviate that? Start keeping a food diary. It's funny how people don't want to. Uh, write something down if they think they shouldn't be eating it. And it's, again, it's psychological, uh, but sometimes that works. works. Um, really think about, are you hungry? So a couple ways to look at this is, yeah, have some water. If you drink the water and you're not hungry anymore, then that's great. Uh, a lot of times people are thirsty when they think they're hungry. Another thing you could do is, uh, think about what you want to eat. Like, okay, let me go get an apple. And if you don't really want to eat the apple, or let me get some carrot sticks and hummus. If you don't want to 
eat the carrot sticks and hummus, you're probably not hungry. You just want to eat something. So that's when you may want to, um, what I tell people all the time is make a to-do list of things you can do when you're stressed that aren't eating. Uh, because in the moment, it's just easier to grab the bag of chips or the pint of Ben and Jerry's and dig in. Um, but if you have a list of things you can do, and it might be going for a walk, it might be playing with a pet, it might be calling a friend, it might be you know, doing your nails or you know, anything, doing a crossword puzzle, anything that just gets your mind off of what is causing you to be stressed. Um, keep those bingeable foods out of the house. If, if you know Ben and Jerry's is your downfall, then allow yourself to maybe go for a treat once in a while and get a cone at the, at the store, but don't keep them in the house. What you do want to have in the house is those healthy foods. Have fruits and veggies and, and popcorn and all those healthy things easily accessible. Don't have the celery sticks or the, you know, carrot sticks in the back of the veggie bin where you have to, you know, dig for them and forget they're there and wash them and cut them. Get those fruits and veggies prepped and washed and put somewhere right in the front of the refrigerator so that you can open them. Oh, yeah, let me grab some of that and you see it. And then, of course, the exercise. Whoops. Sorry, wrong way. My, I lost my arrow. There we go. All right. Um, and nurturing yourself. Definitely want to take care of yourself physically. Um, as well, and you're, you know, mentally, as well as physically. So looking for uh, things that you like to do for leisure, whatever it may be, we all have different interests, but allow yourself time for that. Um, journaling. Journaling is a great way to sort of write something down and you can forget about it. So, you know, if something's really bugging you, then write it down or maybe you have a friend you know that you can vent to but then but then that's it we're not going to keep going over it and over again with every single person we run into because now we're just reliving that stressful moment or that's you know the stressful situation over and over again but truly once you get it out there it's okay it's gone it's done um and also journal positive events we don't want our journal to be just boom boom negative negative you know, something that made you feel good that day. I always, when I say goodnight to my kids at night, I, that's always one question I ask. Tell me something good about today. And sometimes it's something very simple, like I like dinner. <laughs> you know, some, sometimes there's nothing too exciting in the day. Um, you know, it, the positive event doesn't have to be this momentous thing. It could just be something that you liked. Um, you know, thinking of yourself being more positive about this, not... Uh, you know, being, you know, allowing yourself uh, to not be perfect and know that you're going to do the best you can and this is, and this is fine um, and take things little by little. There's always going to be setbacks uh, and struggles. So knowing that, um, you know, just one day at a time, we're going to, we're going to take everything one day at a time. And then finally, just some quick stress relief tips. Um, you know, we want to recognize when you are stressed, uh, get organized. So what is more stressful than needing to go somewhere and you can't find your keys or your glasses or your phone? So if everything, and those are just a few things, but if everything in your life, um, you know, have, has a place to live, then it's much more, you're much less likely to get stressed over losing things. And that can, um, you know, and that, you know, if you can't find your keys and you're trying to leave the house and get to work, you know, that has a whole um, sort of waterfall effect. That's not the right word I'm trying to use, but um, like a domino effect, you know, okay, now I was, I, I got out of the house late. So now I'm sitting in the worst traffic and, oh, because of that, now I'm late for work and I missed that meeting. Oh, and because I missed that meeting, I didn't find out what project we were supposed to start. So, you know, it can really, really uh, just that simple thing of having a hook by the door where your keys go uh, can really alleviate a lot. Uh, trying that, you know, simple relaxations on a regular basis, that, uh, you know, self-massage, just uh, massaging your hands, your arms, your feet, whatever it might be. Um, getting, I have um, in the house, I have a tennis ball that if my back's real tight, I can roll on that and that's real nice. Uh, the breathing exercises. Uh, keeping those journals, you know, thinking of things instead of negatively, let me have a more positive thought of things. Um, instead of, oh, you know, I'm never going to 
get that or that's never going to work out. Just think, oh, you know what? I'd, I'd really like this to happen. How can I, what can I do to, to get this situation to go my way? Um, those technology and electronic breaks get rid of, or I'll, don't get rid of the electronics and the breaks, but, you know, for a moment of time, have those breaks. Um, you know, make sure you stay mindful and in doing so, <clears throat> we want to incorporate all those senses. Like I said, <clears throat> as a dietitian, I like to get those electronics away from mealtime because mealtime should be about how does the food taste? How does the food smell? How does the food feel in my mouth? All the, how, how satisfied or full am I getting as I'm eating? This is not something that you're mindlessly shoving a fork in your mouth while you're scrolling uh, on a device. By including all of those senses, it makes the meal more satisfying and it's just healthier to your physical and uh, mental health. Uh, trying to be out in nature every day. That is truly something that can be uh, very beneficial. And again, just making all these things a habit. You're not going to change overnight. You're not going to adopt a new lifestyle overnight. Uh, make small, uh, set small achievable goals every week and move, you know, progress from there. Um, so maybe the first goal is just, I'm not going to use my phone at dinner. Okay. Yeah. It's not a big deal, but it's not something you're used to doing. So whenever we're changing a habit, that's the hard part. The new habits usually aren't difficult. It's just changing from where you are to where you're at uh, or where you want to be. The small goal may be, I'm going to take a 10 minute walk every day. Okay. Yeah. That's nothing huge, but if you can eliminate your phone at dinner and take a 10 minute walk every day, the results will be huge. And then after a week, you can feel positive about that because you achieved that, or at least most days, maybe you achieved it. The following week, you're going to step it up a little bit. Um, so that's, that's basically it. Um, and <clears throat> again, like I said, everybody's body reacts different to stress. Um, everybody's body will react different to the different stress relievers that you're trying to uh, use. So, you know, something may work for your neighbor, but not for you. So you want to try different things and find what works well for you. But does anybody have any questions or comments? Like I said, I have the chat open so I can see them. If you don't have a great rest of your day, you can get along with your day. Uh, and I thank you so much for joining me. You are very welcome. Thank you, everybody.